Hello folks, Everchanger here, and welcome back to more Pokemon Crystal. Last time, we made our way around Cerulean City, and we were able to track down the missing machine part for the power plant, which is very important considering our goals for exploring the entire Kanto region. And this time, before we return that part, there is one last thing that we have to do here in Cerulean City. The Pokemon Gym Leader Misty, the tomboyish mermaid, as we saw last time. Now, this gym is funny because Surf completely breaks this gym, because you're basically allowed to just surf around all the trainers in here and go straight to Misty. But I'm not going to be that cheap, I'm not going to do that. Yo, champion making. Since Misty was away, I went out for some fun too. He he he. oh. I don't remember that quote from when I played this game last. Oh my god. Now, one interesting thing about this gym in the remake. In the remake, every single gym leader, with only a couple of exceptions, will actually leave their gym at some point during their weekly schedule. In any other gym, all of the gym trainers will actually still be in the gym, but in the Cerulean gym, all of the trainers will leave if Misty leaves. That is because this gym is, at its core, a swimming pool, and Misty is the lifeguard, so if the lifeguard is not here, no one is allowed to be in the pool. Which is a really, really cool detail. Like, that's a level of detail I didn't expect them to go into, but I think it's really, really awesome. Anyway, as you have probably guessed by now, this is a water-type gym, and this is Electabuzz's time to shine, because we got Thunderbolts and I plan on using them. Alright. Now, this gym is going to be pretty short, so we're actually going to be doing quite a bit more stuff in this episode. We're probably going to be the most all over the place in this episode, out of all the episodes, really. We're going to be going to a lot of different places after we wrap up this gym, so should be really exciting, because we do have that machine part, and with that machine part, there's a lot of stuff that will soon become open to us. Lots of really little things. So this episode, after we do the gym, is going to be like a catch-all. What can we do now that we have the machine part? So, should be really, really fun. Alright. Now, what do we have up next? It is a horsey. And, honestly, would it have killed you to put a Seedra on this guy's team? I mean, not just a Seedra. Why couldn't we just make them all Seedra? I don't know. Once again, it's my complaint of the levels in Kanto just being too darned low, but I guess we're going to have to deal with it. And I guess he does have a Seedra, so it's not terrible. Alright. I always like Seedra's cry, it's very interesting. I don't know exactly how to describe it, but it's just fun to hear. And I'm kind of sad that some of these really memorable cries actually got changed in X and Y, but I can understand why they did it. At the end of the day, they are little 8-bit sound bites, and they probably sounded quite outdated. Sorry about being away. Let's get on with it. Alrighty, let's do it. One more trainer in the gym, and it's probably not going to take us too terribly long, especially since she has one Pokemon. Okay, and here we have a Golduck. Golduck is probably, I, I wouldn't say it's one of my favorite Pokemon, it's just a Pokemon whose design I really like. It's really simple, but it's got this air of power to it. I don't know what it is exactly. Anyway, because it is only level 37, down it goes. And we have conquered every single Pokemon in the gym. I give up. You're the winner. Every single Pokemon, that is, except for the gym leader. So I'm going to go back and heal up the rest of my Thunderbolts just in case things go south during this fight, and I will be right back. Now, I do have to admit, I also took that little cut there, just because it's near the end of August, getting into September, and this time of year really doesn't agree with me, so I actually just really needed to catch my breath. I have to ask, does anyone else have a time of year that just doesn't agree with them? Because with me, it's the fall, which is unfortunate because my birthday is smack dab in the middle of it, and as such, I'm usually sick. But anyway, complaints aside, we have a gym leader to fight. I was expecting you, you pest. You may have a lot of Johto gym badges, but you better not take me too lightly. 
my water type Pokemon are tough. And for the fifth time, we have this awesome music. I love this music so, 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 so much. Leader Misty wants to battle. Sending out Golduck, level 42, with the moves Surf, Disable, Psych Up, and Psychic. Can be pretty scary if you are not equipped with Thunderbolt. However, I am equipped with Thunderbolt, so I think you know how most of this gym is going to go. Not all of it. She does have a bit of a corkscrew coming up, but that Golduck, for the time being, no big deal. Electabuzz gets level 52 for our troubles. And next up is Quagsire. I think we need to make the switch for this one, so I'm going to switch over to Heracross, and we'll see how that goes. Quagsire is also level 42, with the moves Surf, Amnesia, Earthquake, and Rain Dance. That Earthquake is scary, and this thing is, in fact, a um, ground type, so Thunderbolt actually doesn't work on this Pokemon, so really, really want to keep that in mind, and wow, that was a timely critical, my word. Okay, and for that, Heracross gets level 49. I almost said Electabuzz, but we all know that's not right. Next up, we have Lapras. You know, I think I'll keep Heracross in. We'll see how this goes. Lapras is level 44 with moves Surf, Parish Song, Blizzard, and Rain Dance. Little scary, although this thing is an Ice type, so we're going to see how much Reversal can do on this thing. Eh, it's okay. If we can survive another hit from this thing, we'll be able to deal out some devastating damage. Anyway, I'm not sure, but I think... I think this is the first time we're fighting a Pokemon that has Perish Song. Basically what that does is it causes the user and the target to automatically faint in three turns. Pretty creepy. Of course, switching out nullifies the effect, so you have to play it really wisely. It is paired very well with Mean Look, so if you want a pretty nasty strategy, that's a pretty good one. Although the problem is, the user of Mean Look has to remain in play for the effect of Mean Look to remain in play, so you have to play your cards wisely. Anyway, last up we have Starmie, level 47, with the moves Surf, Confuse Ray, Recover, and Ice Beam. Very nice. And I think Thunderbolt is probably going to take this thing out in one hit if I had to guess. I'd be very surprised if it didn't, I don't know. Ah, uh, nope. Didn't have anything to worry about. Didn't even need a critical. Very good. And with that, we have defeated Misty. You really are good. I'll admit that you're skilled. Here you go. It's the Cascade Badge. Very nice. You gotta soak up that jingle, because pretty soon, it'll be the last time we ever hear it. Are there many strong trainers in Johto? Like you, I mean. I'm gonna travel one day, so I can battle some skilled trainers. And indeed, in Black and White 2, they finally follow up on that, because Misty shows up at the Pokémon World Tournament, which is really cool. Whew, you showed me how tough you are. As always, that was one heck of a great battle. Very good. Anyway, I think with that, our next order of business is to head over to the power plant and finally return that machine part because I'm sure they have definitely been missing it. So let's go do that. And here we are back at the power plant. I think you all know what we must do. So let's head on right over here and let's speak to the manager. Ah yeah, that's the missing part for my beloved generator. You found it? Well ha, thanks. Here, take this TM as a reward. And we get TM07 which contains Zap Cannon. It's a powerful technique. It's not what anyone would consider accurate, but it packs a wallop. I believe this move has a coin flip accuracy, meaning 50%, but if it does hit, it's pretty much guaranteed to cause paralysis, which is insanity. Since the generator's been fixed, the manager's been cheerful. Man, news travels fast. All right, we can finally get the magnet train running again. Indeed. I collect Pokemon, do you? Okay, this is, the, this is the trade guy. He doesn't have anything new to say. What do you all have to say? 
the generator's up and running. It's making electricity to spare. Oh, yeah. The generator's running again. We'll have to beef up our security presence. Indeed, good sir. Anyway, with that, I would like to meet you guys on Route 6 for the first thing that we can do with this new found power. Okay, here on Route 6, if we head right on over here, the guy blocking the way at the underground path is actually gone, and we are, in fact, allowed to enter. Very nice. Now, I believe this is the only time that this music plays in this area. I think in all other generations it plays a different song. Well, I don't know, maybe in Generation 4 it still plays this. But anyway, there are a couple of hidden items around here that I would like to find. The first one is this X Special right here near the south end of the tunnel. Now, can we ride our bike in here? We can. Interesting. Although, personally, I like this music a little better. And last up is... where is it? It's around here somewhere. Aha! A Full Restore. Very, very good. Very good indeed. And once we come over this way, we are in the northern part. Many cities in Johto have long histories I'd love to visit. Indeed, that is why I like Johto as well. And this will deposit us on Route 5. And of course, my repel wears off from going to the power plant earlier. Anywho, next thing up, I want to show something in Saffron City that you really, really want to take advantage of. Okay, here in Saffron City, you might recall that last time we were here, there was one house that we did not visit. That house is right here. And of course, there is a Blissey right here. Veterans of the series will know the significance of that. She recently lost the polka doll that a boy gave her three years ago. Ever since then, she's gotten even better at mimicry. Anyone who's watched the Yellow Let's Play? My daughter likes to mimic people. Her mimicry has earned her the nickname Copycat around here. Interesting. Let's head up the stairs. And we have a couple of dolls. This is a rare Pokemon, huh? It's only a doll. And again, over here, same exact text. Very, very fun. Now, what's on the TV? It's a TV. Okay, then. And we have a Dodrio. Now, this is interesting. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest one of all? Not sure what's up with that. Hi, I heard that you lost your favorite Poké Doll. If I find it, you'll give me a rail pass? I'll go find it for you. You think you lost it when you went to Vermilion City? Pardon? I shouldn't decide what you should do? But I'm really worried. What if someone finds it? I find it hard to tell who says what in that little cutscene. But yes, it's very interesting. The, the uh, copycat right here has lost her polka doll, and she claims to have lost it somewhere in Vermilion City. So I think we should go look for it. Now, hawk-eyed viewers will know that we have actually seen this Poké Doll already. If we come down here to the Pokémon Fan Club and head on inside... It's a Clefairy, huh? Oh right, it's a Clefairy Poké Doll. Very interesting. Speak to this guy. I love Clefairy, but I could never catch one. So I'm making do with the Poké Doll that I found. Oh, I see now. The girl who lost this Poké Doll is sad. Okay, could you take this Poké Doll back to that poor little girl? I really like how this guy's a good sport. It could have been a lot more difficult. I'll befriend a real Clefairy on my own one day. No worries. And we get the Poké Doll. And we put the lost item in the key items pocket. Very nice. You watch. I'm gonna get a real Clefairy as my friend. Noble cause, my good friend. Bring the doll back to Copycat and you will get quite the good reward. Yay, that's my Clefairy Poké Doll. See the tear where the right leg is sewn on? That's proof. Okay, here's the Magnet Train Pass, like I promised. And we get the Magnet Train Pass. Very nice. That's the pass for the Magnet Train. The rail company man gave me that when they tore down our old house for the station. Interesting. Speak to her again. Hi, thanks a lot for the rail pass. Pardon? Is it that fun to mimic my every move? You bet. It's a scream. All right. Head downstairs, and I think her parents might have something new to say. Okay, her father doesn't, but I believe her mother does. 
Oh wow, she actually doesn't. That's surprising. I feel like they would have updated that. Anyway, the rail station is indeed where Copycat's house was three years ago. It is right here. Saffron City Magnet Train Station. Head on inside. And now that the train is running, phew, how many times have I gone back and forth between Kanto and Jodo? Always some fun dialogue in here. Before the Magnet Train Station was built, there was a house here. A little girl named Copycat used to live there. Hi, do you have a rail pass? I have one. All the people in Saffron who ride the Magnet Train have passes. And we may finally ride the Magnet Train. We'll soon depart for Goldenrod. Are you coming on board? Absolutely. May I see your rail pass, please? Please? Please. Okay, right this way, please. This is our best way to fast travel between Kanto and Johto. Very, very nice. Take this rail train, and we will be deposited right here in Goldenrod City. We've arrived in Goldenrod. We hope to see you again. Now, unlike the um, SS Aqua, we can take this train anytime we want. I'm the president. My dream was to build a train that is faster than any Pokemon. It really brings Johto much closer to Kanto. Now, is he like the president of the company, or what? Anyway, we'll soon depart for Saffron. Are you coming on board? Yes. Now, we are in Johto right now, but we're going to have a much bigger reason to come back to Johto very, very soon. So for the time being, we're not going to be doing anything there. But soon, I promise you, we will be back in Johto for some very important stuff. I promise I didn't forget. We've arrived in Saffron. We hope to see you again. Very nice. Now, the next thing I would like to show is in Lavender Town, and this is outright required for the plot, so I hope you're paying attention. Okay, so we got all that optional stuff out of the way, now how about the required stuff? Well, never fear, because if we come in and talk to this guy once we have restored the power plant... Ah, so you're the David who solved the power plant's problem. Thanks to you, I never lost my job. I tell you, you're a real lifesaver. Please take this as my thanks. And we get the expansion card that goes into our Pokegear. With that, then, you can tune into the radio programs here in Kanto. Gahahaha! I believe the radio programs here are pretty much identical to the ones in Johto, except some of the hosts are different. Hey there! I'm the super music director. I'm responsible for the gorgeous melodies that go out over the air. Don't be square. Grab your music off the air. Now, one thing I should note, there is no lucky number channel or Buena's password in this region. So there's only a couple of things you're allowed to listen to. Welcome, feel free to look around anywhere on this floor. But with that, our next stop is where else but Vermilion City. Now that we're here in Vermilion City, you might recall earlier in the series someone mentioning that you can listen to the Poke Flute music over the radio. And I think you know what we're going to be doing there, and I also like the pop-in on this Snorlax sprite right here. Anyway... Snorlax is snoring peacefully, however, if we go into our Pokegear radio, we can explore all of the things that are broadcast. So there's places and people, which is kind of a variant on whatever DJ Mary broadcasts, I believe, in Johto. Basically a bunch of flavor text on areas in Kanto and people and things like that. There's also Let's All Sing which is pretty much the same as Pokemon March and Pokemon Lullaby in the Johto region, and I believe the schedule is also the same. However, on Channel 20, they just broadcast standard Poke Flute music. Now, I highly recommend you save before doing this, for reasons that will become apparent in about 10 seconds. The Poke Gear was placed near the sleeping Snorlax. Snorlax woke up! And we can battle the one and only Pokemon Snorlax in the entire game. It is a good ol' honkin' level 50. So I hope you packed some Pokeballs for this thing. Now, one thing that I should mention that I'm really not proud of is that when I played this game originally, I caught this thing in my Master Ball because I was a stupid little child and I used my Master Ball. On this thing. I do not recommend you do that. It also has rest which can put it to sleep which might be useful for capturing this thing. 
So I mean, once it's asleep, it's definitely worth giving it a shot. Now, one of the dumbest things I did in my original save file for Crystal was, wow, we got it in one shot, was uh, I trained up a team of six level 100 Snorlax. Don't ask me why I did this, I just did. And yes, it did take quite a while. Anyway, as this is the only Snorlax in the game, I figured it would be prudent to catch it, similar to Sudowoodo back in Johto. Snorlax, the sleeping Pokémon. Do note that at this point in the series, this is the heaviest Pokémon in existence. This Pokémon's stomach is so strong, even eating moldy or rotten food will not affect it. Interesting indeed. Anyway, I'm gonna send that to Bill's PC, and with that, the area is now clear, and you can also proceed this way to Route 11 if you want to. So this is another really good opportunity to explore this route if you haven't done it already, because this removing Snorlax business is in fact required for completing the game. This right here is Diglett's Cave. Now I want to put up a rappel for this real quick, because as you might imagine, there are some wild Pokémon in this cave, so let's head on inside. A bunch of Diglett popped out of the ground. That was shocking. Diglett's cave is home to two new Pokémon. As you might imagine, they are Diglett and Dugtrio, so we are finally able to obtain these, which is very nice. Now, for some reason, only in Crystal, the levels of these guys are kind of weird. Also, there's a Max Revive right here. Definitely worth pointing out. They, the uh, Diglett and Dugtrio are strongest at night, slightly weaker in the morning, and they are at their weakest during the day. This only happens in Crystal, and I have no idea why. But anywho, with that, we are now here on Route 2. And we are at the other end of Diglett's Cave, so if we go into the Pokegear map, you can see that we are now over here on the western side of the region, which we could not access before. Very, very nice indeed. Anywho, you're going to want to bring a Pokémon with Cut to slash your way through here. And you know what? We're, we're going to fight this guy just because he's here. If you walk in tall grass wearing shorts, do you get nicks and cuts? Another mention of shorts. I don't really know what it is with shorts, but as I've said before, I find the joke pretty amusing. This is Bugcatcher Ed. Now, we are right at the tail end of this video, so this is probably the last thing we're going to be doing here. But... Trust me, we will be back on Route 2 at some point. We're just not going to be exploring the entire thing quite yet, because I'd rather explore what is north of Diglett's Cave first, because it is right here, and it's pretty relevant to the plot at this stage, so I think we're going to be going to check that out. And I find it really funny how this is one of the very, very early game routes in Generation 1, and now in Generation 2, you've got all these trainers with Pokémon, that would absolutely annihilate any new trainer coming through here. <laughs> I'm sure I'm not the only one to have made that observation, I just find it really, really funny. Anyway, this guy is not too terribly creative, he's got three Beedrill, which is an interesting choice, I suppose. But of course, Fire Punch is definitely the best method by which to get rid of them, which we have done. Very good. Get our experience for that and Bugcatcher Ed was defeated. Ouch, 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 he says. I guess he got some nicks and cuts of his own. They'll really sting when you take a bath. Yeah, this is true. Anyway, head north up here, and we are here in Pewter City. However, we are going to be saving exploring this area for the next episode. So I think we are going to end things off here. So, this past episode of Pokemon Crystal, we defeated Misty, and we obtained our 13th? Yeah, 13th Pokemon League Gym Badge, and we also returned the Machine Park to the Power Plant. And then we went on a grand tour all around the world to check out what restoring the Power Plant can do for us. It's actually quite a lot. And next time on Pokemon Crystal, we are going to be exploring Pewter City and perhaps some of the areas surrounding it, because there's some quite interesting stuff to be seen. So without further ado, thank you all for watching, and I will see you guys next time.